So now with our nested vSphere environment in place, it is time for us to begin the deployment of the NSX component on top of that nested environment. Now, our objectives in this video and the videos going forward isn't to completely describe and understand the entire world of NSX, but it's rather to walk you through specifically how to build and implement an NSX lab on top of our nested vSphere environment. And as we proceed, we'll be taking a look at the various components and how they work. But for a deep dive into the world of NSX and how it works and how to configure it fully, once again, please check out our content over at CBT Nuggets for that full discussion. So having said that, let's put a plan together for the initial deployment of the first component of NSX, and that is the NSX Manager. So currently in our topology, we have our little vCenter server appliance VM that's running or was running on ESXIC. We migrated it over to ESXIA, and these are our three virtualized nested ESXi hosts. So the brains behind NSX is the NSX Manager. And the NSX Manager has a couple of primary responsibilities. One is we log into it to configure our NSX environment and the details about NSX regarding security and virtualized routing and switching. But it also, besides working as a management plane, it also is responsible for the control plane and coordinating the efforts between the ESXi host and the other VMs that are involved as part of NSX. So for the deployment of the NSX manager, we need to plan on the IP address that we want to use for that NSX manager. And what I propose we do is let's go ahead and use dot 21 on my same 192.168.1 subnet. And then the next question is, where should we place it? Now, NSX Manager takes a lot of resources and it really likes to have them without a lot of latency and delay. So we could place this NSX Manager on one of our nested VMs. However, for the benefit of performance and having it operate quicker, it would be better if we could place it on a physical ESXi host. So for the deployment, we're gonna be sitting here at our management PC. I have here on my management PC, the template file for deploying the NSX manager. And I would recommend that we deploy it down to this physical host ESXi 6. Again, for the sole reason of having better performance because that VM is then gonna be more directly connected to that hardware and not have to go through an entire additional layer of virtualization. So if we want to deploy this NSX manager on this ESXi host, we're gonna be using the vCenter server for the deployment of that VM that's associated with this host. And if we had decided to go ahead and deploy the NSX manager as a VM on one of these nested VMs, for that function, we would have used the vCenter server appliance in our nested environment. So from our management computer, I'm gonna open up a console to our vCenter server that's in charge of this physical host, ESXi6, and then we'll go ahead and deploy the software for the NSX manager as a VM, and we'll have the compute resource be ESXi6. So here is the dark mode representing the vSphere.physical, and there's our three ESXi hosts that are running as nested VMs, and we're gonna go ahead and deploy the NSX manager, and let's place it as another VM in the same folder. So here, in vSphere.physical, we'll right click on the nested lab VMs folder. We'll click on deploy OVF template. And then I'll click here on local file and I'll go grab the files on my local hard drive associated with that NSX manager. So I have grabbed that file. It is an OVA and this is the NSX unified appliance. And with it selected, we'll go ahead and click on next. It's asking for the VM name and let's go ahead and call this NSX manager or nested lab. And that way, when we see that name, we'll know exactly what it is. We'll place it logically in that nested lab folder. We'll click on next, and then we'll pick a compute resource to support it. And we only have one, and that is 192.168.1.106. And that is our ESXi6. We'll take a look in a moment and see why it has that little red mark there. We'll click on next, and I'll say ignore all regarding the certificates, and click on next. And then we have choices regarding our configuration, which boils down to how much RAM and memory are we gonna give this. So I've got quite a bit to burn, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose medium. We'll click on next. Then I'll put on the local data store there on ESXi6, and I'm going to use thin provision, so we're not gonna chew up tons and tons of storage. We'll click on next. And as far as the network assignment, we'll click on browse. And I am going to go ahead and associate with this port group called VM Network, and that is a port group associated with a standard switch on ESXi6, which connects directly to my 192.168.1 network. So that'll do for now. We'll click on OK, 
click on next, and then we'll start filling in the values. So I'm gonna put a password in for the grub root user. So I'll put that password in and then I'll confirm the password. So there are some fairly significant password requirements. They are listed right here. So if you don't meet those, it's gonna ask you to try again. So there's the password I've supplied for the grub root user. We'll scroll down. I will put in a password and confirm it as well for the system root user. And as we scroll down, the next user is admin. So I'll specify the password there and confirm it as well. And then we have a CLI audit user. So I'll go ahead and specify a password for that user and confirm it as well. And then I'll use the default name for the admin and audit users. And then for optional parameters, it says for internal use only. So I'll leave those alone. And then for the host name, let's call this NSX-MGR. And then for the role name, we'll specify it's going to be an NSX manager. And for its management address, we're going to use the address of 192.168.1.21 based on our plan. And that is using a 24-bit mask, so I'll specify that. And the default gateway on my management network hasn't changed. It's still 192.168.1.1. And then I'm not going to be using IPv6, so we'll go ahead and leave that alone. And then for DNS... Let's go ahead and put a DNS server out on the internet of 8888. So later we'll go ahead and integrate a DNS service local on our local network, but, but for now just gonna use public DNS servers. And then for the domain name search, I'll leave that alone. And then for NTP servers, I'm gonna point out to a public NTP server. And that name based on DNS resolution is gonna give several options for NTP servers. And it really doesn't matter which one we choose as long as we're getting the time. I'll enable SSH at this NSX manager. I'll also allow root SSH logins. And that's all we need to specify here. And then we'll click on next. So there's the summary and we'll click on finish. And let's go to the top. I'll click right here on VMs. And I've got a failure. So it couldn't transfer the files for some reason. So what I will do is I will repeat that process and we'll try it one more time. All right, so let's try that again. Actually, before we do that, let's just take a peek at this uh, message. So we'll go to monitor here. And actually, let's go to host and clusters view. So there's our host and if we go to monitor and trigger alarms and take a look at the details here it's showing us that host hardware power status severity critical and if i go down here to the description hardware sensor status processor green memory green fan green everything looks green looks okay oh power red i got you there so i only have one power supply connected and so perhaps that's what it's complaining about. All right, so I'm gonna say, I understand. Thank you very much. We'll reset that. And let's go ahead and deploy that NSX manager once again, or at least attempt to. So we'll right click and we'll say deploy OVF template. I'll grab that same OVA. So there's the OVA, we'll click on next. I'll put it in the nested lab VMs folder. I'll go ahead and just call it NSX Unified Appliance. And then we'll go ahead and have this host right there be the compute resource for it. That's ESXi6. We'll click on next. And I'll go ahead and say we're okay with the certs there. We'll click on next. And I'll specify for the size. I'll use medium. We'll click on next. And then I'll go ahead and put all the details in like we did previously. Thin provisioning on the data store on ESXa6. We'll click on next. We want it to go ahead and use a port group called <laughs> VM Network because that's the name of the port group on ESXi6 that goes directly to the 192.168.1 network. So we'll choose that. Click on next and click on next and then put those details in once again for the NSX manager. So I'll put the passwords in there. I'll put the passwords in here. I'll put the password in there. I'll put the password in there. And for the audit user, same thing. Ideally, in a production environment, those should not all be the same passwords, but in my lab environment, I'm going to make it easy on myself. And if we scroll down, we'll just call this NSX Manager there for the host name. And for the role, we'll leave it as NSX Manager as opposed to something else like NSX Global Manager, which would be in charge of multiple NSX managers or an NSX Cloud Service Manager. We'll just go with NSX Manager. And then we'll put in its IP address at that 21 and a 24-bit mask and the default gateway. And we're not using IPv6. And then for DNS, I'll use a Google DNS server. And we'll go ahead for the NTP list and we'll specify the name of an NTP server it can use. And then we'll enable SSH, we'll allow root login. And that is all we need to supply. We'll click on next and finish. And if we look at recent tasks, it is now in the process, or hopefully it's in the process of deploying that OVF template. And that looks better than last time. So we'll go ahead and let that complete. So for the deployment of the NSX manager, that process could take anywhere between 
five and 35 minutes. So we'll let that continue till it either installs and deploys the NSX manager or until there's a failure, at which point we'll troubleshoot it together. And while that's finishing up when it's done, even though this NSX manager is gonna be living on this host right here, logically with the IP address of dot 21, we're gonna be using it up here in our nested environment. Also, while that's happening, let me also go ahead and take this vCenter server, which I believe is currently at the moment over here on ESXIA due to the update we did over here on ESXIC. And I'd also like to move it, this vCenter, over to the direct server itself. So we'll still have the logical functionality of having our NSX manager up here and also our vCenter up here working with these hosts but we'll also have the benefit in the lab environment of getting direct access to the hardware here on the ESXi6 host. So to move this vCenter from up here that's currently running on one of our nested ESXi hosts down here, I know I have vMotion already set up up here on these three hosts. So I wanna make sure I also have vMotion set up right here on ESXi6 and as part of this vCenter that's running down here so that we can do a live migration of the vCenter from our nested environment over here to ESXi6. And once we do that, we'll also place this vCenter in that same folder with the VMs for A and B and C, and also with the VM for the NSX manager. So it'll be very clear where those VMs are on the actual ESXi6 host. So let me take a peek at our current status. So that looks like it's going great. So while that OVF is being deployed for the NSX manager, let's also do a quick vMotion of the vCenter server that's currently running up in the nested environment, and let's move it down to ESXi6, and that way we can have some better performance. So here in the dark mode, the dark theme on vSphere.physical, let's go to the networking and let's create a port group that we can use as part of vMotion, and we'll do a cross vCenter vMotion. So we'll right click on our VDS for nested lab, and we'll go ahead and click here on distributed port group, and we'll create a new distributed port group. We'll name it vMotion, click on next, and then we want this to be in VLAN 3 along with the vMotion that's happening up in the nested environment. So we'll click on VLAN and we'll say VLAN 3. And then we'll put a check here so we can customize all the other details. And we'll click on next and we'll click on next. And then I'm gonna go ahead and allow MAC address changes, forge transmits, and also enable Mac learning. And then click on next. We'll take the defaults for traffic shaping and click on next. And then for teaming and failover, we're gonna be using on this ESXi host VMNIC2 in conjunction with this port group, that's great. And we'll click on next and we'll leave NetFlow disabled and we'll click on next and we won't block all ports and we'll click on next. And then we'll click on finish. So now we have this new port group. Let's go ahead and create a VM kernel adapter for ESXi6. So we'll right click on that port group and we'll click on add VM kernel adapters. We'll select ESXi6 right there, click on next. And then let's choose the TCP IP stack specifically just for vMotion and we'll click on next. And since this is ESXi6 at 192.168.1.106 on VLAN 3, let's go ahead and use 10.3.0.106 with a 24-bit mask. We don't need to configure a default gateway, so we won't. And we'll click on Next. So there's the summary, and we'll click on Finish. All right, so it's VLAN 3. And if we click on the distributed switch right here and go to Configure and click on Topology, you can give us a bird's eye view of what's going on. So we have our port group called vMotion with VLAN 3. We have one VM kernel adapter, VMK2, that's being used by ESXi6 with the address of 10.3.0.106. And if we scroll up, that is using its VMNIC2 adapter. Fantastic, so we should be able to do a cross vCenter vMotion and move the nested ESXi VM over to this environment over here. And we'll place it in this logical folder called nested lab VMs. So if we open up discovered virtual machines, there's our vCenter server appliance that we're using as part of vSphere.physical. And then the new vCenter that we're gonna move over here in this nested lab VMs, that'll be the vCenter that we're using as part of our nested lab environment. So let's head over to the nested vSphere environment and start the migration. So back here in light mode at vSphere.nested, Let's go find our VM. So there it is right there. We'll right click on it, click on migrate, and then we'll choose a cross vCenter server export. And I don't want to keep a copy of it here. I'm going to go ahead and simply move the whole thing. We'll click on next. The vCenter we want to move it to is at 192.168.1.30. And the username over there is administrator at vSphere.physical. So I'll go ahead and put that in and I'll put in the password and then I'll click on login. All right, that's a good sign. We'll click on yes. 
All right, we're successfully connected. We are going to do a cross vCenter migration. And in the data center called physical, we have a cluster called physical cluster. And we're going to use ES6A6 as the new home for our nested vCenter. So we'll select that host, click on next. We'll specify the local data store there. We'll go ahead and say thin provisioning. So far, so good. We'll click on next. We'll put it in the folder called nested lab VMs. Click on next. And then for the network, it's currently connected to a port group called nested management to 192. And we want to put it, and we'll click on browse here. We want to put it on this same VM network, which is off of a standard switch. That's okay. Over on ESXA6, which connects to that same VLAN 1, which is my 192.168.1 network. So with that port group selected, we'll click on OK. And I have a nasty gram right here saying that the target host does not support the virtual machine's current hardware requirements. The destination virtual switch version or type legacy is different. Oh, I see the type. That's because we're trying to park it over here on a standard switch port group. Let's go ahead and click on cancel and let's create a distributed port group that we can use instead and see if that makes it happier. So we'll go ahead and create a new port group that connects to our management networks. So we'll right click on the distributed switch, click on distributed port group and new distributed port group. And let's call this PG. PHY to remind me where it is, and 192 as far as where it goes, and we'll click on next. I don't want any VLAN tagging, but I do want to take a look at the other details, so I'll put a check in the checkbox right here under advanced, and click on next. Then I'm going to go ahead and allow MAC address changes, and forge transmits, and enable MAC address learning, and click on next, and click on next. All right, we'll leave traffic shaping alone, and click on next. And then we're going to be using VMNIC2, that's fine, that's the only one that's associated with that switch, and we'll click on next. And we'll leave NetFlow disabled and click on next. And we won't block on all ports and we'll click on next. And we'll create that finally by clicking here on finish. All right, so now we have a distributed port group that we can migrate to. Let's go back to the nested vCenter and let's try it again. So here in the nested vCenter environment, we'll right click on our vCenter appliance VM. And from the menu, we'll click on migrate. We'll do a cross vCenter server export, click on next. It remembers our existing login that we made over to dot 30, which is the parent vCenter environment. We'll click on next and the computing resource will be ESXi6 and we'll click on next. And then we'll choose the data store local on ESXi6 and specify thin provision and click on next. We'll place the VM logically in this folder called nested lab VMs and click on next. And then for the port group, we'll go ahead and browse for our distributed port group called port group PHY 192 and click on OK. And we'll see if it's more comfortable with that. And it is. <laughs> All right. It just didn't like the fact that I was trying to move it over to a port group on a standard switch when it was coming from a port group on a distributed switch. No worries. All right. So we'll click on next and next and finish and away it goes. That vMotion of our nested vCenter server appliance is on its way. So while that's being migrated over, let's also go back to our parent environment here and check on the status of our deployment of the NSX manager. And this shows as about 83, 84% complete. So that looks great. And it also shows here the incoming vMotion from the other vCenter. So we'll give all of that a few moments to complete. And when it's done, what we should have is here in the parent environment, we should have not only our three ESXi nested ESXi hosts, but we should also have a functioning NSX manager and also the nested vCenter server appliance all running as VMs right here in this specific folder. All right, so it looks like everything is done. We have the vCenter, the nested one, that's migrated over to the physical server. And we also have our NSX manager deployed, but it's not powered on yet. So this will be a great starting point for our next video, where we'll take a closer look at the functions and components of NSX, and we'll power on the NSX manager, and then we'll integrate it with the vCenter that's in charge of our nested lab environment. So I'll see you, my friend, in the next video as we continue this journey together.